everyone. Welcome back to Cluster B Milkshake. I am your host, along with the coolest book fiver, eater yeah. on the planet, Mr. Chicken. Uh-huh. All right. Today, we are going to talk about a video I watched from Sam Vakden called Seven Phases of Shared Fantasy. Now, um, I had a few little mental breakdowns um, as I was taking these notes and the next day this shit fucking is just hanging over my head. So making a video, get the fuck out of my head and into you. You take it. You take it. Okay. So um, here we go. Shared fantasy is the space where the narcissist can re experience their childhood trauma safely. Yes. It's a fantastic space that is divorced from reality because reality is dangerous. This is why I tell you to let your cheating people go. Let them go. Let them go and be with their fantasy because when reality sets in, it's going to go to shit, y'all. Are they going to run back to you? I do not know. Not everybody runs back to you, and you're going to see why. Um, but um, they're going to know that they fuck up every relationship, everything. They don't know why. I'm going to tell you why. All right? He says that we invite you to Dis into Disneyland. Okay? This is our fantasy land. Um, but for you, it's a nightmare. Because a narcissist's mind is a haunted house, he says. Yay. Flying bats and fucking cobwebs and shit. Serial killers running around everywhere, at least in here. Um, our world is contradictory, but it makes perfect sense to us. <laughs> this is funny because, you know, I've had um, people say that, you know, you're contradicting yourself. And it's like, well, I did feel like that. Now I feel like this. And maybe I'll feel like that some other time. Okay. So be a little forgiving. Okay. All right. Um, these are the seven phases of shared fantasy. Now he only numbered two, three. He stopped numbering four, five, six, and seven, whatever the fuck. I'm not going to make up the numbers, but we're just going to give you the information and my feelings behind it, okay? Number one, love bombing and idealizing you. Um, this is to get you addicted to your own image. He says by idealizing you, we idealize ourselves. Um, I take this as we become the perfect partner because we made you our perfect partner. We made this up for you. So I'm fucking garbage unless I can be perfect for you. All right. You're sculpted, beautiful marble. What the fuck am I? Well, I'm going to have to fake fucking perfect for my beautiful fucking, you know, sculpture. Okay. He says we do this by taking a snapshot of you and then photoshopping the snapshot. Okay, this is, you know, the made up fantasy stuff that, you know, I'm pushing on you. Um, this, this, the, the fake is um, who I am enmeshing with. This is who I'm falling in love with. You are my dream person, okay? Is this the real you? No, no, it's not. It's whomever I am creating in my head and pushing on to you. You are gonna complete me in every way. You're gonna be my soulmate in every way, okay? Mm. Run with that red flag, please, because that means that somebody is making you up to be something that you are not, all right? All right, number two, dual mothership. He says that we slowly convert you into a maternal figure. You are then tested with abuse. Are you going to love me and accept me no matter what? You know, are you going to give me unconditional love? Are you going to um, reprimand me and being be the shit parent? Okay. It's a recreation of our childhood, but with you. He says that we also become your mother, your parental figure. 
We offer you unconditional love, and this becomes very addictive. Now, for me, um, me doing this because I want that mirrored back, okay? I'm going to do, 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 and I want you to do, do, do back to me, okay? This is um, what I am doing with my partner right now. I am trying to be the best version of myself for him. And he is doing the same thing back, you know, for me. And right now we are believing that um, this is, we can sustain this. So, um, I'm going to cry. <laughs> All right. This is a second chance of having a good childhood with a good enough mother. This is the first time you can love yourself. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. This is the first time you can love yourself through the narcissist. Material. Maternal gaze. Um, fuck. He says it only pertains to mothers. Fathers have nothing to do with this stage of development. A mother determines whether you become an individual at all. Why would we, why would we want you to be our mother when our original caregiver was a piece of shit. Because we never got to separate from our original mother. So, you know, our mother enmeshed all over us um, and, the and the narcissist never got to be their own person. Um, the, the demanding, the smothering, the abusive mother, the not good enough mother, this is the one that we were not able to separate from. So it's like um, we're trying to have um, a relationship, recreate our childhood with, you know, um, the perfect parent so we can separate and become, you know, an adult or, or a, a true self, right? It's fucking weird, right? Anyways, this part made me um, cry when I was doing the notes because, fuck, <laughs> because I have so much shame thinking about my own children and the shit that I did to them. They're going to suffer too. Fuck. Okay. He says... We have no ego that we are selfless. No self. So we cannot develop and become an adult. We are stuck in a repetitive loop trying to separate from our mother in our mind. So we use our romantic partners to become an adult. But we need to separate from you like we couldn't from our original caregiver. Number three, how do we separate from you? We have to discard you. We do this in our mind first, okay? He calls this the mental discard. This create two problems. Number one, abandonment anxiety. The narcissist is afraid to lose you. Number two, Narcissistic injury. The realization that we were wrong about you.
if we have to discard you, it means that you were not ideal. I feel like a gar garbage person. <sighs> now this is our fault. We choose, we choose to push this fantasy narrative on you. So everything crumbles. Disneyland is now on fire. I am the creator of my fake world, and I failed. Of course, I'm going to make this your fault, because failing is unbearable, okay? So the narcissist needs to devalue you as an external object, okay? So first it's happening in our head. And then we have to bring it to life. When we do this, we restore our grandiosity. Abandonment anxiety is gone. Narcissistic injury is gone. This is when we get to claim that you have changed. Okay? Or we call you manipulative and deceitful. Okay? Because now... Now, you are not the fantasy person that we made you out to be, so we have to make it your fault, your fault. You're, you're, you're the master manipulator. Do we care to lose such a person? No. Okay. He says that there is a gap between the idealized snapshot and the devalued object. This causes anxiety because the narcissist feels that there's something wrong. <sighs> the way we resolve this is to split you. <sighs> One of you is all good, the other is all bad. This is when you're discarded so we can be at peace. Now, I have done this so many times throughout my whole life in all of my relationships that it's mortifying. I feel mortified. I need a shame bell. I need a shame bell. Just a fucking... Ugh. So I can just shame myself for feeling this way. Okay, but in the moment when we do this, our grandiosity soars and we are all good, okay? Because if you're the garbage person, we're not the garbage person, right? You are the enemy a threat. You have to be destroyed. You have become nothing to us and you are discarded. Now here's the dilemma. You're gone. So what do we do with the snapshot, the, um, you know, the perfect person that you were supposed to have been? We are at war with the thought, with the thought of you because the snapshot has been corrupted. You're supposed to have complete me in every way. You were supposed to have been my soulmate, but now you're not. <sighs> Okay, so he says, we need you to agree with our devaluation. You have to agree that you're all bad. Now, remember when I told you that if you want to reconcile with your um, narcissistic ex, that you have to say that everything was your fault. Everything was your fault. If you want us back, you have to take the blame for everything. Remember? Um, so you have to agree, but what does that fix? Nothing. 
because we're still going to think of you as garbage. I mean, that's going to be, you know, our perfect picture of you is already destroyed. It's almost like um, when, when I would cycle through with the borderline and idealize and devalue and idealize and devalue, when um, I would idealize and put you back on a pedestal, I would, you know, just lock away all the bad things that I think, you know, about you until you trigger, um, you know, me to attack. Um, and because, you know, I didn't know, I was completely unaware that all of this was going on, um, you know, everything is your fault anyways. Okay. So when we discard you, we want you to take all the shit that we created for you and the devalued you. Okay. He says, we, he says, we just want you to take it out of our head. Go, go, go away. Take all of this shit away. But this will cause abandonment anxiety because we are bonded to the make-believe you. Okay, we're bonded to the um, the the soulmate. Okay, remember when I said it doesn't matter who leaves whom, we um, feel abandoned no matter what. So because we believe that um, you were this, you know, deceitful deceiver that you are not this perfect person that um, you made us believe you were, which we actually pushed onto you. Um, so you, you know, we feel fooled, you feel fooled, we feel abandoned, you feel abandoned. Doesn't matter, we feel abandoned in our mind, no matter what. This is where a Hoover would come into play, okay? To reduce the anxiety, we need to re-idealize the external object to help re-idealize the internal object. So this is, you know, when they're going to, um, you know, say good things, put you back on a pedestal, things like that, you know. Of course, somebody can come back and um, rip you apart. Um, we're going to blame you for everything. That's when you have to take the blame for everything. And then we will, you know, treat you well and everything until we don't again. This is why um, this, this, it doesn't work for me. Um, because to me, you keep fucking it up. You keep fucking up that perfect picture. I mean, of course you are. You don't know what I want. And you wouldn't be able to give it anyway. Ah, okay. Um, I would try anyways because I'd want to get rid of the anxiety. You know, and of course it doesn't last long. I mean, you fucking know. You fucking know. Okay, so. We we re idealize you back up the pedestal you go this means that we failed at separating from you our mother we failed because we keep going back we can't fucking be our own individual people we cannot have our own sense of self we need other people to tell us who we are okay so we suck um we failed and the cycle will continue until somebody fucking says, I'm done, I'm done, and doesn't fucking come back. Even if you never see us again, we are going to reenact all of this bullshit with somebody new forever in a cycle, in a cycle, forever and ever and ever and ever. We will be mortified after the whole um, ideal ordeal, not ideal, well, fuck, we idealize you, that's the fucking ordeal, shit didn't work out, the fucking whole relationship is over, we go dark, we crumble into a pile of shit, and that's when we have to reinvent ourselves and become somebody new for someone new, okay? If we are stuck in this mortification mode, um, this is, you know, where we do the drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex addiction, 
anything, even just running through, you know, toilet paper people just being very abusive, um, uh, using them and throwing them away because that's how we feel about ourselves, whatever. And then we will go and try to idealize someone new, okay? So please, um, no more falling for Hoover's um, because bringing us back to baseline with our emotions, regulating our emotions and bringing us back to peace um, after the Hoover, it, you're going to fucking regret it. It's, it's, it's you, it's almost like um, you are just in this loop of a nightmare over and over again. And you, you are the only one that can get yourself out. We're not saving you. We're not saving you. Okay? I hope that was helpful. And you have a great day. Namaste.